on to another coding ASMR video. This is the final part of the random picture generator I am working on using JavaScript and HTML. As you can see here, I have generated a random picture. I like the color scheme, by the way. It's like a from a pink to a bluish cyan turquoise. It's pretty cool. And so far, I got this program to generate random rectangles as well as random polygons. As you can see with these weird lines, those are just polygons that are abstract. And they are generated in a random color. So yeah, that is what I have accomplished. And the program just chooses a function in the array by reference in random by randomly. So I generate 10 polygons, 10 objects and choose either of them, either rectangle or polygon. So let's now improve it. So what I'm going to do is maybe make one function that generates a random circle. Now, instead of a rectangle, it's a circle. So let's do that. Typing noises begin. So yeah, it's very similar generate a random position x and y random size by the way I'm kind of repeating it this line of code because every time I generate a random rectangle or a random circle I'm gonna do with I kind of generate a position and size but actually for the circle I'll just need one size because it's it's going to be a radius. So yeah, from 0 to 400 pixels. So let's make a random color. Generate a random color. Make it so it fills. Like so. And I'm going to do star girl. Uh, I think it's context dot circle or something. I think there's an ellipse or something. No. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's a. I forgot what the method name is, but there's like a method that generates a circle. I think. No, that's not it. I think it's this one. You generate an arc. And you can generate an arc that goes 360 to make a full circle. So maybe do this. Rand position X, the star position. The radius should be, hmm, let's see, this one. <coughs> and I think that's the one. And let's see. I'm gonna call it here so I'm gonna erase this for now goodbye picture you will see goodbye and I'm going to create just a rectangle and I'll make one circle let's see how it goes nope it's not working that's pretty much expected so oh yeah maybe zero or something start angle And end angle is, I think that's, 
I think how many I think that's in radians so two or so, I think two pi out of 180 no it's maybe 360 maybe they put it in the degrees and this is a boolean so true for counterclockwise and look here are some circles so you have a big one you have this one and you have I guess this is a cyan turquoise and a small one so I got five circles it's pretty cool <coughs> And so, I call arc here, so this is what I've done here, but yeah, so I'm figuring out why it generated five circles, which what I, I just want to generate one circle. Maybe I missed something. There's a feeling that I... I made a mistake that's right in front of me. Oh yeah. I have generated in this function. I put it in the wrong method, so I just take this loop. I should have done here. Move this main loop and draw one circle. No, it's not the one. And then close here, I think. Now it's not working. That's great. So this worked here when I play when I called the arc function for the context and now I happen to make it so it doesn't work. So I should have done put these into modules, these polygon and rectangles, but I didn't do it. I just forgot. But module is a way to separate your code and another file. And you can import you would import it into the main file to make it so that the code is separate in separate files so oh the reason why the circles did not probably generate alone if I would do one circle is that I probably didn't set the line width like a specific width for the line when you trace it so I would do line width equals the same thing as you would do for the rectangle I mean for the rectangle I mean for the polygon like this one which generates a random size like how thick the polygon is or or yeah that's how how thick it will be because yeah because since you can see that there's thin and thick uh, polygon so and here we do stroke style stroke style and then you stroke like that and there you go that's one circle and now I'm gonna do add it to the array so not only that you generate random rectangles or polygons but you also generate random circles so yeah and re uncomment this and then Let's see how it works. So here you go. You generate circles as well as polygons and rectangles. 
So that is really cool. Look at that. 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 All right. So, yeah. Now the next step what I'll do is is that I will go make it so not only that you could you would like to generate static colors, solid colors, but you could also generate gradients. So, I'm going to try to make a gradient functionality that you make a gradient every time. So, maybe I'll add a a polygon make so that the rectangles are gradient some of them are in solid color or something so let's try that let's modify the random rectangle so instead of the color you make it in a gradient so maybe I'll generate a random number fill 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 choice or something so one for gradient and zero for static color, solid color. So let's do const. Color fill choice equals maybe random uh random int I think random int which would be which would be this one uh random int of two so no of one so it generates from zero to one I think I think that is it Let's see. Yeah, so from zero to one. I'm generating your tingles, some mouth sounds as I code because sometimes when it gets stuck, I tend to do these. So, so yeah, so from zero to one randomly, I guess. And then I'll do if color if color fill choice is equal to zero, I would do context. Uh, I'll make it here. Maybe you make a gradient variable. Like that. Wait. If it's zero, then I'll do gradient equals a new gradient, I think. Context dot linear gradient or something. There is a gradient. Great linear gradient. And it's going to take you take an input uh, position and a and a and a I think these are points I think yeah so like the starting point and the stopping point so where the gradient starts and where the gradient stops so let's start with the Let's make it, make it like a random position or something. Or maybe, maybe I'll just start it with the random position X like that and then the position Y and then 
the stopping point will be this plus uh, the size. So the stopping is the stopping point is after the size is from position x this size. I think I'm not sure if that's really logical because that's that's a random thing that came up. I could come up in the span of this video. This is probably not really good at indenting or something. So yeah, the, the starting position of the gradient is the x and y of the shape, and the stopping point where the gradient stops is the. Uh, let's start it with the the x position plus the shape of the <clears throat> plus the shape, the size of the shape, <clears throat> x and y. So, and I'll do, and I'll do context. That fill style equals gradients. <clears throat> like so. So. Or else, I'll do this. I'll copy this this entire line. Just put it here. And put it here. And yeah, I and I did not miss. I did not. Uh, I almost forgot about it. I'll have to add gradient stops, so I have to add a random color. So I'll do context dot. I'll do. I'll do. I'll do context dot. Oh wait, gradient dot add. I think it's add color, add color stop. There you go. I think it's on the gradient. I think that's with the gradient object, and it's going to be from zero. I think, and the color would be will be. It will be this. So the starting color will be this. The color. I'm gonna make another random color. Generate another random color. Random color. Random color like that. So you want to make it a gradient. So you have to generate another color. So that's the starting color. And then I generate a random color. And I'll do gradient add color stop. I think that's the one. I think that's one is like the end. Yeah, there you go. One is the offset at the other end. So that's their stop stopping point. And I will do this the same thing. Okay, and then set it to gradient if the choice is gradient, so, or else keep it solid. Okay, so as you can see, look at that, so these rectangles have gradients, and if I would do, 
if I would maybe instead of uh, let's just test it out to do only generate rectangles and I'm going to console log this guy I don't know why there was an auto there was no auto complete and I am going to now generate only rectangles so so as you could see they're all zeros so so as you could see all of these rectangles have gradients so we have a stopping point and an end point so the corners I made it so the starting point is always at the top left and the end point is always at the bottom right because you add the width and the height of the rectangle so from the start it's at the top left at the end is bottom right you add a width and a height to differentiate between the stopping position of the gradient and the starting position so each rectangle has random gradients and I have to fin fix this function because it always generated zeros maybe that's maybe it was because it's exclusive so whoops I'm gonna do int Uh, like that and so as you can see now you have a solid solid rectangle and also rectangles with gradients so that's cool okay so now as I have added gradient functionality for these rectangles now I'm gonna try to add gradients for a gradient for the polygon the one with the many different shapes like these ones whoops like that uh, these ones that have like all of these weird like these abstract polygons you can see here these ones like the one in beige I'm gonna try to add a gradient to that so let's make it so you make a gradient so for the polygon I'm gonna do the same thing so I'm gonna do where is it? Let's do the same thing. Color fill choice, I think. Yeah, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So create a gradient. Oops, didn't add these semicolons. And I'll do if color fill choice is, equ is equivalent to zero, I mean to one. I'm gonna do gradient equals, and it'll be this one. Copy and paste this one. By the way, uh, I should have done some code refactoring because there's a lot of code that's repeating here but like you could see here I make gradient functionality and also a, a gradient functionality here and as you could see it's not it's not really efficient as you have as I have repeating code but in the scope of this video it's gonna be really it's gonna take a lot of time for me to split this up in smaller pieces I mean to make it to minimize the code duplication because you know code duplication is really bad and I have done that before and I've actually had refactored duplicated code that that I have in projects that I did not work on in in any of my videos like projects that I've done outside of my videos and so yeah so for this function I'm gonna make it a gradient and I have to make another random I'm gonna make it make a starting position and I have to make a new position so I'm gonna do const 
rand end plus x equals uh, uh oh yeah I'm gonna make point at x because I make I actually make a point object should have done it over here for the positions but whatever so point dot x that's your starting point these the first two arguments point out y and I also have to make another point so const end point that's the stopping point equals random point and I'm gonna instead of adding the size I'm gonna add a point I'm gonna make it set this to endpoint dot x and endpoint dot y because the polygon can stretch out over the entire canvas rather than have a size unlike a rectangle and so yeah and then I will instead of fill style is stroke style and over here I'm gonna make it an else block place this line of code over here and so as you can see not only that you have solid polygons but you could also have you see this blue one that that starts blue and becomes light yellow that's what I'm talking about you have a gradient polygon so that's really cool and to show you more I'm going to remove these circles. I'm going to comment this out and just make it. I'm going to only set polygons. And look at that. Uh, look at that. 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 So if I, if I make five polygons or something, I'm going to show you a good one. I want to show you one with a good gradient. Hmm. Yeah, you could see one. This beige one, this brown one, tapers to blue. This yellow one you could see here. It goes from yellow to purple. And this one goes from green to lighter green. And this one goes from like a like a sky blue to a wooden green, like a, a wood ish, a green that comes out from the woods. So it looks like this picture comes out from a wood and jungle. So that's my first impression of this abstract art. And I'm gonna go back and set this out. I'm gonna restore this. Remove this. I'm gonna remove remove this or because I already already tested it. Whoops, it's not what I want. And now, this one's pretty simple. He got some circles, a big circle, and polygons and a rectangle. And I have more variety now. Look at that. Look at that. It looks like from an artist that generates abstract art let me know down in the comments i forgot the artist that the art any artist that like creates these abstract art because i remember doing these kind of art learning about abstract art in art class shout out to my art teacher in high school she's a really good teacher and look at that i like this color scheme it's like from pink blue pink yellow that color scheme this one is pretty cool a thin one a triangle and a few circles and this one okay so this will conclude this video 
I hope you have gotten your tingles. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And yeah, this is a random abstract art that I've coded from scratch in three parts. So yeah, stay tuned for the next Coding ASMR series or video, and peace out.